Good morning, everyone. Welcome. So glad you could join us today, whether I see your beautiful faces here or if you're joining us on the stream. Uh, so happy to be here with you guys today to worship. He is risen, right? Amen. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pray and we'll, we'll get started. God, we thank you. We thank you for who you are, God. God, set our hearts on fire this morning. Just to prepare our hearts for worship this morning, God, that, that we would be able to uh, worship you in spirit and in truth, God, that we would uh, give the focus all to you, God, that we would um, set our hearts on you. Be with us today, God, as we worship. God, let your glory fall in here this morning. Show us something. Speak to us. We're ready for a new vision, a new word from you. In Jesus' name. All right, let's go. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? I see lightning, I hear thunder, something stirring six feet under, dead things coming back to life again, I believe we're about to see another resurrection, I see signs and I see wonders. Another resurrection. Come alive, wake up, sleepers. He is risen. We are risen with him. see what I see 
do you see when I see? I see signs and I see wonders. Do you see when I see? I see lightning. I hear thunder. Do you see when I see something stirring six feet under? Coming back to life again I believe that there's about to be another resurrection
with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. We're filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery, Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name, Jesus. We're filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We're filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name, Jesus, 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 Jesus. see the scars of love upon his hands. The king is in the room. We'll watch the darkness flee at his command. And who is this king? Jesus.
praise this morning. He is risen. He is alive. He's worthy. We praise you, Jesus. All glory, all honor, all power belongs to you, Jesus. I promise you this. If you will open your heart, 
you will meet this Jesus we've been singing about today. Some of you for the first time, some of you need to meet him again. And he's here and he's in the room and he's here just for you. He's alive. He is alive. Luke chapter 24. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away. And when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed and confused about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. Spoiler alert, these are not men. Verse 5, and as they were frightened, they bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember, he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful man. Now, the Greek word there for delivered is didomai. It means to give, to hand over, to deliver. Didomai. Turn to your neighbor and say, didomai. I want to know you got that. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful man. He must be crucified and on the third day rise. Holy Spirit, Spirit of Jesus Christ, come now. Open our hearts. Speak to us, Lord. Draw those to you who need to have a meeting with you today. Not a meeting with a dead Jesus, but a meeting with a living, risen King. We bless you today. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of my message today is three. So go find three people you don't know. Tell them happy Easter. Tell them they look good. They're dressed in their Easter finest. And you can find your seats. While you're finding your seat, would you text in the word here to the number on the screen? This is how we take attendance here. Now listen, we aren't going to send you a bunch of weird stuff. This is not signing up for spam. This is just letting us know you're here. I can promise you I will not text you. Our church staff thread has 1,633 texts on the group chat. Three of them are from me. One of them says, yep. Two of them say, no. <laughs> you will not be getting spam texts from me. Do you all text in? I didn't see a lot of fonts here. I'll text in with you so that we all do it together. How about that? Can we pull the thing back up on the screen? I think we did it too fast. Let's see if I can figure out how to do this. 816-327-1900. You text in here and it will let us know you're here. Did y'all get it done? I'm here. I hate my phone. <clears throat> my little girl, Lily, she loves my phone. And when I have my phone out, she does this. She goes, dada, dada. And you know, everybody thinks she's saying dada, but you know what I think she's trying to say? I think she's trying to say, ditto my hand it over. My little girl's smart. She's already learning Greek. Ditto my dad. I want that phone. Jesus mentions over 21 times in the gospel that his resurrection is connected to the third day. Not the first day, not the second day, 
the third day. If you Google why that is, Google is going to tell you that because <clears throat> Jewish custom said that a person's body did not begin to decay on the third day, Jesus said he would rise on the third day so that they knew he was truly dead. That's according to Google. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 15, for I delivered, did oh my, to you. As of first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scripture. Jesus did not rise on the third day according to Jewish custom. He rose on day three according to the scripture. See, here's the thing. Every single person lives their life according to something. Every human being ever lives their life according to something. Many of us live our life according to our preferences. Just what we feel like doing that day when we wake up. More and more and more people are living their lives according to fear. Every decision they make, what they spend their money on, they do according to fear and what they think is going to happen. Many people live their life according to science, according to facts, quote unquote facts, because I've noticed the facts are always changing on me. Anybody else notice that? I've noticed with a lot of young people these days, because I was a youth pastor for several years, the Lord uh, did omide me to the youth. He handed me over to them for a while. So I love, I love the, the young people. They're the next generation. But I have noticed many young people live their lives according to the moment because they're on TikTok and they're catching reels and whatever's coming their way is changing the direction of their lives. We all live our life according to something. And Jesus lived his life according to the word of God. This is hard for us to grasp because what most people know about Jesus is that he is the son of God and he is fully God, and that is 100% true. But Jesus is also fully human, which means he was born, he had to grow up, his brain had to develop, he went through early childhood development and middle development, and he suffered loss, and his brain was wired, and the pathways of his brain were wired just the same way that yours and mine are. His imagination was shaped by something. His mind, his worldview, shaped and formed by something. He was rooted in something that's greater than TikTok, something that's greater than science, greater than the facts, greater than fear, greater than the past, and for sure greater than our preferences. He was rooted in the word of God. And so when he had grown, as the scripture says, he grew in stature and wisdom. When he had grown, he knew that according to the word of God, the Messiah must suffer, he must be delivered over to sinful men, die and rise on the third day. According to the scripture, according to the mindset and imagination of Jesus, the third day is about entering into the test. That's the first thing. According to the scripture, day three is about entering into the test. See, here's the thing about all human beings. We want to determine what is good and what is bad, what is right, what is wrong. We want to define our lives, and we are horrible at doing that. We are so bad 
at deciding what is good and what is bad. This is how bad we are at it. We will enact entire genocides against people, kill off millions of people and say, that's good. This is the story of Pharaoh in the Bible. He enacts a decree, I'm going to kill the firstborn of all the Hebrew people. And guess what, guys? This is good because this protects our nation from those people. And I want you to know that story is not just a cutesy little fairy tale in the Bible. This is about human nature and human history. Just look out through history. Look at your own life. We do this type of stuff as human beings all the time because we define good as good for me, regardless of what it does to everybody else. Good is good when it's good for me. Bad is bad when it's bad for me. And what God tests us in is will you lay down your right to determine what is good, what is bad, what is right, what is wrong, what is life, what is death, and listen to me. That is the test. And so, God comes to this man in the Bible named Abraham. Abraham's had to go through a few tests with God at this point, but this is the big one. Genesis chapter 22. God says, Abraham, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Verse four, on the third day, you see it? On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw the place where he was to sacrifice his son from afar. It was time to enter the test. And what happens is Abraham takes the knife to sacrifice his only son. And what he is doing, don't miss this, what Abraham is doing in that moment is he is saying, God, this does not look right. Morally right. This does not look good. This does not lead to life. But I am laying down my right to decide what is good and what is bad right here. I'm letting go of that right. I don't decide what's good and bad. I don't decide what's right and wrong. I don't decide what's life and death. God, you do. So no matter how bad this looks, no matter how long it works, How wrong it looks. And believe me, many people struggle with this story because they don't get the point. He's laying down his right to determine what is good and bad. And what happens is verse 13. In that moment he lays down his right, Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram, and he offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. Yahweh Yireh, the Lord will provide. Abraham found out this great mystery of God that every human being gets the opportunity to step into. If you lay down your right to determine what's good, if you lay down your right to define what is life, God will give you new life. I can't explain it. You're not going to fully understand it. This is how it works. Lay down your right to define good, to define bad, to define right, to define wrong, and you will find new life. And so Jesus has to enter into the ultimate test, the test of the cross, where he looks at this executioner's rack, which is logically, obviously, death. This is not life. This is not right. This is not good. This is not just. But Jesus has lived his entire life perfectly passing the test that says, I will not take wisdom into my own hands. I will only follow the will of my Father even unto death. Because Jesus knows 
that if I lay down my life that looks like death, I will receive new life, just like Abraham before me. God will be faithful to to give new life. And it is in that moment where Jesus lays down his life that new life is released to everyone. And that's the second thing, according to the scripture, that the third day is all about. The third day is about the release of new life. See, at the very beginning of the Bible, the creation account, it tells us that on the first day, God said, let there be light, and everything was revealed. You can see on the first day. Things appear on the first day. But it's not until the third day that the plants come out of the ground and the trees spout. sprout. It's the third day where life is released. That plays out again on days four, five, six. Next set of three. Don't get confused. You all see my fingers? You counting with me? Day four, he puts the lights in the sky. The sun, the moon, the stars, they reveal on day six, the animals and human beings come. Life is released on the third day throughout scripture. The first day is the reveal. The third day is the release. Y'all got that? First day is the reveal. Third day is the release. All right, I'm losing some of you. Let me put it this way. Every movie fan in here knows the difference between the reveal and the release. Y'all ever see those reveal trailers and you get all excited about the movie and you saw the reveal and then you figure out, well, I got to wait three and a half years for the actual release of the movie? Why do they do that? I'll put it, let me put it to you another way. Every Apple fan, where are all my Apple people at? Here we go, most of you in the room. Every Apple fan knows the difference between the reveal and the release. See, here's the thing. I, I preach from this, it's paper, and this, it's paper, because I'm not cool. Cool preachers, they preach from their tabloid. Like Pastor Grant, he preaches from his tablet. I want to be cool like Grant. And I've wanted that. I've, I've thought about, I mean, I want to be cool, and I want to preach from the tablet. And so uh, several years ago, I decided I was going to do it. I was like, okay, I'm going to be a cool preacher. I'm going to get the iPad, and I'm going to learn how to preach from it. And so I saw they were coming out with a new iPad, so I went to the store, and I said, hey, I want to see the new iPad. They said, hey, it's not coming out for several months. I said, I don't think you know what you're talking about. I just saw advertisement for the new iPad. And they said, oh, you saw the reveal, but it doesn't release for several months. And so I didn't get it, so I'm still on, <laughs> still here. It's that uh, space between the reveal and the release that's the hard part. Many of you are in that place right now, that place where you're going, but God said he was going to, and I knew God was going to, and it didn't happen. It's called Saturday. And I believe for many of you in here now, you, you, you identify with that. I'm living in Saturday. Today is your Sunday. Today is the day of release. Because so many Christians, they live in Saturday. They live in that place of doubt and struggle. They, they've seen Jesus. They believe who he is. They've heard the story. But they've never actually experienced the release of new life. Today is your day three where you can experience the release of new life. The first day, it's revealed. The third day, it's released. Friday is where it's revealed who Jesus is. He's revealed. 
he goes before the trial. They ask him, are you the Christ, the anointed one, the king? He says, I am. That's who I am. On Friday, he's hung on the cross. And above him, it says, king of the Jews. Because Jesus is revealed as king. He didn't wear a crown of gold. He wore a crown of thorns. He wasn't seated on a throne. He was hung on a cross. It's a reveal of the kind of king he is. He's not the king that rules with a heavy hand and commands armies. He's the kind of king that dies for his people who have rebelled against him. It reveals the perfectness and the righteousness of Jesus because Pilate said, I find no fault with him. There's nothing wrong with him. There's no sin. There's no imperfection. At the same time, it reveals the perfection and righteousness and holiness of Jesus. Friday reveals our unworthiness and our sinfulness and our wickedness. It shows us the state of things. It's the reveal. And on Friday, John chapter 19, verse 30, it says this happens on Friday. John 19, verse 30, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. His last words. He said, it is finished he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. He bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Now in English, we say he gave up his spirit. But this part of the Bible was not written in English. It was written in Greek. And so what it says is that Jesus bowed his head and did oh my. Y'all remember that? See, you all thought I was just randomly telling you that at the beginning of the service. But what I was really doing is I was revealing it to you at the first part so that I could take you through the second part where I t- teach you about the third day. So now we are in the third part where I release the revelation of this word to you. Jesus delivered He handed over. He gave his spirit. Are you all awake out there today? I'm trying to tell you, nobody took his life from him. He gave it freely. Now, listen to this. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. It's the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And Eve is tempted by the devil to eat of the tree of knowing good and bad. What that means is she is tempted by the devil to define good and bad on her own, to define right and wrong on her own, to define life and death on her own. Y'all remember the test. And what happens? Eve takes the fruit of the tree of knowing good and bad and she hands it to her husband. Now, When the scribes translated the Old Testament into Greek, guess what word they used to describe what Eve did? Didomai. She handed it to Adam. And then Jesus comes along. Because when Eve handed that fruit to Adam, Adam ate it and he handed the world and humanity over to sin, death, and the devil. Jesus comes along, and in Luke 19, this is his last meal with his disciples. It says he takes the bread, he gives thanks for it, he breaks it, says, this is my body. And then he did oh my. He hands the food to them. And y'all know what they do with it. The one called Judas betrays, which in English we translate betray, but the Greek word is didomai. Judas takes Jesus and he hands him over to the religious leaders. 
and the religious leaders did oh my. They hand him over to Pilate. And Pilate hands him over to the crowd. And when he hangs on the cross, he says, Father, into your hands, I'm handing over my spirit. See, it was in his hands all along. It looked like this whole mess was in our hands and that we were doing it. But what Jesus wants you to know is your life, this world, everything has been in his hands the entire time. Amen. Can I tell you something else about Ditto Mai? Ditto Mai means to hand over, to give until the appropriate time. So Jesus was handed to the Sanhedrin until it was time for him to be handed to Pilate until he was handed to the centurion. And when he hung on the cross, he said, Father, I'm giving you my life. I'm giving you my spirit. Hang on to it for me. Not for one, not for two, but for three days. And when he had risen, with all power and all authority and all wisdom and all might that had been handed to him. That's Sunday. That's today. That's your day. Because Jesus, he had a little conversation with the devil Revelation chapter 1, 18. It doesn't record the conversation, but it tells me the outcome. He said, uh, devil, what do you have in your hand? The devil says, oh, this is the key. He says, the key to what? Oh, I have the key to death. Adam and Eve gave it to me. They handed it over to me. And you know what Jesus said to the devil? Y'all better clap for this one. Did oh my. Hand it over. Hand it over. I paid the price. I defeated death. And then he says, devil, what do you have in your other hand? He says, oh, this is the key to hell. This is the key to judgment. This is the key to the punishment for everyone's sin, wrongdoing, and selfishness. This is the key to shame. And Jesus says, hand it over. Hand it over. I paid for that. That belongs to me now. You all can stand. I'm done. Hand it over. Somebody say to your neighbor, hand it over. I couldn't hear you. Say it a little louder. Hand it over. That's the invitation today. That's the invitation from Jesus today. Hand it over. Hand it over. Some of you, you got a lot of disappointment in your life. You got a lot of hurt in your past. You got a lot of trauma. Jesus himself is saying to you today, hand it over. Ditto my. I paid for that. That doesn't belong to you anymore. Hand it over. Some of you are trapped in sin. You're trapped in bad habits. You're trapped in your selfishness. You're trapped in in just deciding what's right and what's wrong for you. Jesus is saying, just hand that over today. Hand it over. Hand it over. This is the place where you find new life. It's in the handover. I pray every Easter, and I've been praying this Easter, that this room would be filled with people who are sick and tired of their life. Aren't you glad somebody's praying for you? (laughs) Who are fed up with their life, who are tired of the way things are going, because you have the opportunity to meet with this Jesus, who if you hand it over, you hand your life over, he will give you a new life. 
that is the promise of the Son of God. Hand over your life, your right to define your life. You will receive new life. It's the third day. Today is your third day. Today is the day where you can have, feel, and experience the release of the new life of Jesus. At this moment, I want every head bowed, every eye closed, prayer team, you can move in to your positions. If you're here today and you're in that place, you're saying, yeah, I'm tired. I'm tired of my life. I've reached the end of myself. I'm fed up with the path I'm on. Jesus is inviting you. I'm not inviting you. Jesus is inviting you to step in to the new life he has for you. Listen, Jesus did not come to this earth, die and rise again to create a new religion. He came to bring you a new life a new life. And so if you are in this place and you're saying, well, I don't understand it, I don't get it all, but I know, I know, I know that I need this new life of Jesus right now. And you're willing to say, I'm gonna lay down my life. I'm gonna hand over my life to him. It doesn't sound right. It sounds like death, but Jesus promises you this. If you hand your life over to him, he will hand new life back to you. This is the moment of the handover right now. This is the moment of the handover where you say, Jesus, I am handing my life over to you, knowing and trusting there will be a release of new life to me by your Holy Spirit. If that's you, I'm going to count to three. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm going to count to three, and I want you to shoot your hand up and say, Jesus, I'm here. Jesus, I know you see me. Jesus, I want to meet with you, and I want to lay my life and deliver my life and give my life and hand over my life to you. If that's you today, shoot your hand up on the count of three. One, two, Three, lift your hand this morning. If that's you, lift it high. Lift it high in this place. Jesus, I'm trusting you. I'm gonna hand my life to you knowing you will give me a fresh new life. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Let them experience the release of new life right now in this place. New life in this place. If everybody in, in the house this morning would just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, into your hands, I commit my life. I belong to you now. Today, I trust you. I believe that Jesus is your son. And today, I make him my savior and I call him Lord. Forgive me of my sin. This is my new beginning. This is my new life. This is my third day. Jesus, I choose to follow you all the days of my life, knowing that from this point on, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Everybody said, amen. Can we celebrate today all the people who gave their lives over to Jesus for the first time and the second time, people coming back to him. Come on, let's give him praise. The angels celebrate every time one comes home to him. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord.
his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bowed and drenched in tears, they laid him Messiah still and all the Lord
praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can we just sing that chorus one more time? Just the voices. That hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. You're the one who set us free. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living. Come on, let's praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's risen. And happy Easter, happy Resurrection Sunday. I want to invite you back. Next Sunday, we're starting a sermon series on the fruit of the Spirit. And we're going to actually see the new life, the new creation provided by the Spirit of Christ expressed and realized and experienced in our lives, in our families, in our relationships. So I wanna invite you back next Sunday for that. Also, if you raised your hand today and you said, I'm giving my life to Jesus, our prayer team members, they're gonna uh, meet with you really quickly out back, just take uh, two or three minutes of your time, it won't be long, but they just wanna connect with you if, uh, if you raised your hand today. So be sure you do that right at the back doors this morning, all right? All right, you are dismissed. Go enjoy your afternoon and your lunchtime. We hope to see you next week.